वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर इन पावर सिस्टम प्लानिंग अंडर विच टूडे वी विल स्टडी वट इज इंसुलेशन कोऑर्डिनेशन विच इज टू बी कवर्ड अंडर डिमांड साइड प्लानिंग सो हेयर इन इंसुलेशन कोऑर्डिनेशन जिसका मतलब है कि जो इलेक्ट्रिकल इक्विपमेंट्स हैं सब स्टेशन में ट्रांसमिशन लाइंस पे दे मस्ट बी प्रोटेक्टेड अगेंस्ट द वोल्टेज स्ट्रेस सो दैट अगर हमें अपने इक्विपमेंट्स को वोल्टेज स्ट्रेस से बचाना है देन द इंसुलेशन व्हिच इज़ यूज्ड टू प्रोटेक्ट फ्रॉम दिस वोल्टेज स्ट्रेस मस्ट विद स्टैंड द वोल्टेज स्ट्रेस सो अ प्रॉपर इंसुलेशन लेवल is to be selected यहाँ पे there you can see a diagram where a peak voltage in KV on y axis and on x axis time in microseconds actually whenever the insulation is designed then it must be tested for switching impulse level before that the lightning impulse level have been tested which ha which is having a wave shape of 2.5 slash 50 microseconds which is a lightning impulse voltage but as the voltage level <coughs> of the transmission increases or increasing in the past so the insulation must be tested for switching impulse level therefore a switching impulse level is selected which is having 250 by 2500 uh, microseconds as wave shape so here A is a protective protection level voltage of protected device and B is impulse insulation level of equipment to be protected so to protect a device that is having a protection level voltage of a the insulation level has a much higher value to withstand against the protection level voltage so in india as per i standard 2026 for line to line voltage if nominal system voltage is 132 kV then the maximum operating voltage is 145 kV <coughs> in this way as you can see here 400 kV if a system is having 400 kV as nominal system voltage or operating voltage <coughs> then the maximum operating voltage will be 420 kV the 220 kV transmission line and transmission substations are most common <clears throat> and they are uh, having a maximum operating voltage of 245 kV then the equipment uh, will uh, deteriorate so going to the over voltages as you can see over voltages are classified into two external over voltage and internal over voltage first we will see external over voltage external over voltage are caused by lightning that may be direct induced or black back flash over then any mp that are from nuclear accidents and an emp that is magnetic solar storm so magnetic solar storms are also having a potential to induce over voltage in our electrical grid in internal over voltage you can see transient over voltage they are actually uh, happened due to switching of uh, capacitor banks, switching of transformers, closing, reclosing of line, and fault initiation and clearing. So, due to faults, also transient over voltages can be seen. Also, the next is temporary over voltage that are due to Ferranti effect. In Ferranti effect, uh, <coughs> what happens 
is the receiving end voltage will become higher than uh, sending end voltage during no load or lightly loaded condition so then you can see here uh, one is load rejection so due to this phenomena the internal over voltage as temporary over voltage can happen in our system then we can see what is a steady state so in a steady state contact with circuits of higher voltages arcing around phenomena neutral inversion and resonance phenomena due to these uh, four phenomena the internal over voltage become steady state over voltage so most common is transient over voltage which is due to switching of <coughs> various capacitor inductive elements uh, transformer fault due to fault also and due to closing and reclosing of the lines so we have to protect the system from these kind of over voltages for which the insulators are designed okay uh, when you see a transmission line there is two type of insulators used to protect the tower and insulate the tower from line those are suspension insulators and strain type insulators so these insulators discs are designed and in substations also over uh, circuit breakers uh, transformers you have seen uh, the insulation so the insulation level depends or design of insulation is based on various factors so for 0 to 4 kb voltage level if insulation is going to be designed then it is based on mechanical clearances then 4 to 34.5 kb basically the factor that governs is corona and surge then for voltage level of 69 kb to 220 kb that is our high voltage level so up to that level the lightning and switching surges are very important so insulation design must be based on switching surge and lighting surge so here whatever the insulator is designed then it must be tested for lightning over voltage and switching surge over voltage also they can be tested for switching uh, currents for 345 to 765 kV that is our extra high voltage level switching surge is <coughs> very important because as the voltage level increasing so switching surge testing is very important and then here comes uh, other phenomena that is called as contamination and pollution so this is very important actually contamination and pollution what happens when an insulator get polluted then over its surface due to bird droppings uh, due to the burning of agricultural waste dust uh, <coughs> makes a layer over the surface of insulator due to which there is partial arcs due to the formation of scintillations on the surface of insulator these partial arcs can develop into a larger or bigger arc getting the insulator or complete breakover of the insulator string so here the pollution and contamination is very important so the insulator design manufactured will be tested for these kind of pollutions <coughs> then from 765 to 1500 kV contamination is the only factor on which the insulator design is based on for extra high voltage and ultra high voltage so here the extra high voltage level 345 above 345 kV we have extra high voltage and above 765 kV we are having ultra high voltage so pollution and contamination performance is very important here <coughs> you can see a typical system designing and selecting of a suitable insulator so how the insulators are selected so these are the various criteria for the selection of <coughs> insulators number one is electrical parameter calculation so first of all we are checking for 220 kV system say in point number A 
you can see higher system voltage if higher system voltage is 245 kb this is the maximum voltage level for 220 kb system so it is 245 kb then system line to ground voltage that is this voltage is line to ground voltage or phase voltage so you can easily calculate it by a as the maximum voltage then it is divided by root 3 and multiplied by 1.05 which is a factor so it comes to be 170 so maximum system phase to phase voltage is 170 kV then determine here as peak voltage so actually 245 is the maximum operating voltage level of a 220 kV system and this is not a peak value actually this is a RMS value so we are going to calculate peak value for our line voltage 170 kV is the RMS value so peak voltage level is multiplied by under root 2 which gives us 220.5 so <clears throat> for a 220 kV system where the maximum operating voltage of the system is 245 kV which is the RMS value we are having a peak line to uh, we are having a system phase voltage as 170 kV then we will calculate the peak line to ground voltage that is peak volt peak value of the phase voltage that is 220.5 kV okay then <coughs> while designing there is an important factor which is leakage distance calculation so leakage distance is the distance between the two uh, uh, two pins uh, of the insulator so the leakage distance calculation is based upon the pollution and contamination level so if there is some place which is heavily polluted then recommended leakage distance is 2 to 2.5 inches per kilo volt line to ground okay so with these calculation insulator minimum leakage distance for a 220 kV line is 170 inches okay so if you convert 170 inches to say meters let us quickly convert it through a converter So 170 inches will gives you 4.3 meters 4.32 so <coughs> the uh, the length of the insulator string if there is a tower a transmission tower of 220 kV and lines are coming on the tower so tower arm and the insulator uh, that the conductor coming to the tower arm must have a separation between them which is equal to 170 inches or 4.32 meters and that point where <coughs> this uh, conductor connects and the point where the tower uh, connects in between where in between there is an insulator string for a 220 kV line so approximately 13 to 14 insulators in between a string so <coughs> the distance between the conductor mount and the distance at which our insulator string is attached to the tower arm is called as the leakage distance also the switching over voltage is calculated as 220 kV for 220 kV is equal to 850 kV okay and in this way you can see uh, there is another, another factors also calculated here so here for <coughs> system requirement for a 220 kV system 170 inches is the distance for insulator string in between conductor and tower where the switching surge 